Hi and welcome back. Not so long ago, I had a question on one of my Q&As asking how I stay on top of everything that's going on with the latest research and what the hot topics are in the community. The answer was lots of time and effort and about nine different Facebook support groups. But I do it in an attempt to bring everything together into one curated place, uh, this channel, uh, where hopefully it can then be consumed in a digestible manner for everyone else out there. And of course, that was the intention with the Long Covid Handbook too. But it seems the advent of technology has put me out of a job. AI has come for me and I'm all for it. Uh, so in this interview, I speak to Jessica Dove London about her AI health platform Turn2, asking her what it is, what it does over and above generic AI tools like ChatGPT, and exactly how it can help patients like you and me. Uh, there's a spoiler here, I have been using Turn2 Loads since recording this interview and it is bloody brilliant. Uh, there's a link in the description to take a look at it if you're impatient, along with a free trial. Um, I'll talk more about all of that at the end of the video. Anyway, let's dive in. Thank you, Jess. Thank you so much for joining me. Today we're going to be talking about AI and how it can help us manage chronic health conditions. Could you just give me a, a very brief potted history about how you've come to the place you are now in terms of working in this field? So I had MECFS about 15 years ago, uh, quite severely for a few years. And then a few years later, I had uh, children and they have some serious health complications. So um, one has a rare type of cerebral palsy. And then how did AI come into it? Well, um, I am not an engineer or an AI scientist. However, I began about five years ago working in AI with another AI scientist to try and solve some big problems around finding solutions in healthcare. And it's led me to uh, found a startup, which is an AI company. So our team is full of engineers who are working in AI. And I'm the like lone non-engineer um, who makes sure there's value <laughs> in what we're building. For me, it's always about the problem. Um, when my son was two, month, two years old and he was diagnosed with a rare type of CP, cerebral palsy, the doctor I actually went along to the appointment with this big wad of research papers. And the consultant said to me, you know, there's nothing you can do to help him. We don't bother reading the pa these papers. And I'd taken a few systematic reviews along because I was a bit of a dork. This problem that I felt was, what can I do to help my son? And, you know, very quickly I went online and started trying things and we saw huge changes in his life and it felt like chance. And so, you know, fast forward two years, I traveled around the world. I'd started studying neuroscience. I'd hounded every world leader and um, sitting in a huge conference with all these academics and this world leader gets up on stage and she does this like state of the evidence. And I actually put my hand up and said, I shouldn't have to fly around the world to learn about this. So for me, the problem is that cutting edge treatments or health interventions, the knowledge lives everywhere. Like it lives with research, it lives with experts, it lives with patients. And we're not collecting information quickly enough. We built Turn2 initially as a mobile app, so some people might be using it where we just give people daily information from research experts and patients. you wanting more health breakthroughs. Um, and how do we do that in a low-cost or free way? So, you know, our app is free. Yep, so we've launched this, this product, which is your health sidekick, um, that finds stuff for you. And every week it reads a million words for you on everything new across the world and searches stuff for you and brings you like 10 things but it also will go and do a deep dive. If you have a question, our tool goes and finds you information from research and humans. Like what are patients saying? What is people on YouTube saying? Because all of those voices matter. And we don't want to give any vanilla answers. So sometimes our tools say like no one is, no research is on this particular subtype that you have. Not here's an answer because you want one, even though if there's no answer. Is it fair to say that Turn2 exists as basically a sort of a personalised AI bot that goes off and does a weekly search on everything that you want to know about your condition and your specific symptoms and your specific worries and the specific treatments you're thinking about, and then every week comes back and gives you a distilled download of the state of the world from all of these different places, so from patients, from research, from, from what people are saying all over the place, and then turns it into a digestible amount of information that you can basically just take on every week. Is that a fair description of what Turn2 does? 
Yeah, yeah. So that's we call that the health sidekick, um, but it also will do that for a question. So it, that's the weekly update that it reads a million words a week for you. It'll actually go off and look for events for you and matches you to trials. I'm using it obviously as an end user and like I've had some pretty interesting things like my son recently developed some bone problems and I told it, um, I told Turney, we call it Turney about it. And like that week, I am not making this up. It found me a paper from that week on his particular subtype having this exact problem with osteoporosis. And we'd seen his consultant a week before and the consultant said to me, you don't need to scan for this. It's not an issue. And it's like 23% of people have this problem and I it was giving me this research and I was like but yeah the hope is that you know you don't have to hold that load of having to read everything or that worry that you're going to miss out on things like organizations are like doing these incredible events or people are running these incredible trials and they like can't find people for them and then there are these people looking for support and it's like it's really hit and miss um and so the tool will connect you, you know, it'll connect you to online events that match what you're interested in. It'll connect you to trials, um, but it'll also do deep dive questions, um, answers for you. Um, again, bringing all those pieces together. So in terms of what Turney slash Turn2 can, can offer, you get your, you'll get your weekly download of everything that's happened in the world that you could be interested in. You've got the ability to go off and ask it questions um, and do deep dives for you that are specifically looking to answer that question in a way that's useful to you as someone suffering with chronic illness as opposed to chat GPT so it will say this is what the patients say this is what the researchers say this is what the doctors say is there a way that it can help you with your doctor's appointments so can it help condense information that helps you present it to your doctor in a, in a helpful way is there any way that it can sort of streamline that process one thing it does is it actually creates a priority list for you at the top of your health profile and I personally really need that list because I just get muddled or things happen and I'm trying to work on this and I don't know whether we're making this decision about this thing. And, and so the one thing it does is it does pull out your priorities. And I think that's why some people have asked if they can share it with their health team because, you know, they're managing all these different pieces. That We had um, a really, really influential clinician come in and she's going to actually give this tool to all of her thousands of clinicians in her network. She's really excited about it because she tested it. It was very nerve-wracking for me as a founder with a new product because she asked it a very hard question and she said it was the best answer she'd ever had because it didn't give her a vanilla answer. It actually said here's all we know. And actually there's, because there's very little information that's been research that's been done into the protocol she was looking for. But she said to me, oh my goodness, my clinicians, you know, they have people who they see regularly and they don't know what new things are coming out for them. And I think the ultimate thing is, yeah, what is going to help you with your next little piece that you need to do? You know, there's just different things happening in different conditions. There are new drugs coming out in some conditions. There is diet protocols that are starting to work. How does that get to the right person at the right time? So which conditions is Turney designed to help people with? So at the moment, we are in cerebral palsy. We are in long code of MSCFS, we're in Parkinson's, and we've got MS, lung and lung cancer and fertility up next. The issue we have is we've built a data set on every disease. So we go back 10 years and index the internet and it's also we use AI agents to go on like hunts for certain types of information. And so that's a little bit of like limiting on how many diseases we can go to um, if we want to keep. So when you ask a question of Tony, it, it actually uses mathematical vector embedding to go across 400,000 sources to find your answer. So if I ask Tony a question, do a deep dive on this, it's got its own indexed version of the internet. So it's got yes. its own data set that is yes. the last 10 years of everything that's been published on this subject. And yes. does it look at that and then also go off to see what's been published on the internet since that data set was collected? So anything new that's yeah. happened in the last I mean, whatever. Again, like this, the, the, the Q&A, the deep dive tool, we haven't like launched it. It's literally launching like tomorrow. I was on a call with another person who has a YouTube channel and we, he was testing it. And he asked it a very hard question and he'd like done something that day on the internet on that topic and it found that. So it's up to date. So it indexes yeah. like twice a day um, yeah. on top of the 10 years. So 
Yeah, and it's really interesting. Like I said to my team, what I want for my, and again, no opinion on this particular person, but I, I said, you know, if there's an interview with David Petrino two days ago, I want his his in there. If someone's asking a question on something he's talking about, I want the answer to come up. A lot of people out there are probably, I mean, I don't want to throw a percentage at it, but a pretty sizable percentage of people suffering with long COVID, I imagine, are already having natters with chat GPT or Claude about their condition. Why should they try Turney and what extra value would it give them? We assume ChatGPT and Claude is just going to get better and better. Um, I think what it won't do is I think not yet anyway. I don't think it will search 1,500 new things this week happening in your condition and match it to you personally and do all of that cognitive load for you. It's kind of really good as a reactionary tool. You go to it for a task Something like our team talks about is like, how do we do the work for people? Like, how do we, you know, just do something so you don't even have to begin the task? We've just, again, tonight, it's launching an audio and it's going to be interactive. And if you have any other ideas of how you want it, do you want it on WhatsApp? Tell us and we'll do it. So I guess that's the sense of you won't miss out on new things coming. It'll find them for you. And then the Q&A tool, again, like, what is the difference with ChatGPT? Because ChatGPT is going to get better and better. And I would say the difference is we intentionally don't do vanilla answers. So, and we do patient and human sources. So we just believe they're important because, you know, if a lot of people are talking about one thing, you know, we want to start to look for those bigger connections. But right now it will go in and it will find patient A who said, I took LDN yes. and I felt great after three days. And yeah. then it will go patient B said, I took yeah. LDN and I didn't feel anything despite going up to 10 milligrams That's a day right. or whatever. Right? Yeah. And then it will find yeah. five experts who've done interviews and say what they say about LDN. And then it will find eight papers of, that are recent and it will say what they're saying about LDN. And then it will find the resources on LDN. So it does all of that in like 20 seconds. That's pretty amazing. Um, so if people want to try it, how, what do they do? Um, well, they can come to the website. You can put a link in here and yeah, you can actually try it for free. So it costs $2 a week to use it. Um, it actually costs us more because we are committed to low cost AI and AI is getting cheaper and cheaper. And so, um, and we also have scholarships available. So if people can't afford it, there's a scholarship you can apply for. Cause again, yeah, we totally understand and we want as many people as possible to be able to get these tools. Um, yes, yeah, so you can try it for free, even if you sign up to it um, and see if it's valuable. So I hope you found that interesting. It really is a fantastic platform that's also developing really fast with new features being added all the time. Um, I had been using Claude AI for all of my long COVID questions before, but now I just go straight to Tony and it is so much better. Um, if you want to take a look at the platform yourself, then there's a link in the description, uh, which will take you to the same place as this QR code. There's a free trial uh, to see if you get on with the platform. And if you do decide to subsequently sign up, then using uh, the link in the description, this QR code or the code JEZ10, uh, that's JEZ with a G, G-E-Z-10, uh, will give you 10% off. It's normally $9 a month, so that's already less than half the price of what I pay for Claw. Uh, <laughs> so pretty good value too. Um, if you do use the code or the link and subsequently do sign up, then I do get a small kicker. But I have to be really clear in saying that's not why I'm saying the platform is good. Uh, it genuinely is really, really good. I use it daily uh, with all of my incessant long COVID questions. Um, and I couldn't be more happy that broadly speaking, to some degree at least, it makes this channel redundant. Um, certainly the Q&A vids I've been doing because Tony gives way better answers on complex questions than I'm able to. Um, but after all of this, if turn two isn't for you, but you're still fascinated by what AI might be able to do for you, then in my next interview, I grill Jess about the wider implications of AI in the context of long COVID and how you can use AI tools generally to help you manage your condition and improve your quality of life. Uh, if you've got any thoughts, questions, or feedback on the platform or this video, then the comments section is open as always. Look after yourselves. Until next time.